You say can you say that again? You heard me. Dude, say it again, please. I'm begging you. Could you please say it one more time? <laughs> say exactly what you just said while the cameras were off. My LinkedIn post is blown up. No, 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 no. You said, oh, damn, bro. <laughs> I did not say, you said, my LinkedIn said, post my is LinkedIn blowing up. <laughs> this is just going to be a conversation between you and I, sometimes at the camera. Feel free to make direct eye contact with me at all times. With you, camera? No, nah, go back and forth. Go back and forth. See, John doesn't have a ton of on-camera experience, but that's not why he works at 100 Thieves. It's a good thing that he doesn't have a ton of on-camera experience. That's what I'm for. John and I have a great dynamic. For anybody that doesn't know who this is, this is my partner, John Robinson. He's the president and COO of 100 Thieves. Uh, I am his boss, a fun fact. I, I, I just want to clarify that and, and have that be out in the open. I don't want there to be any, uh, no stones unturned. 100%. And I'm sure that's why everybody's wondering, you know, John Robinson, he works for me. You know You're that. not gonna like fire me now. Right? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I don't even know why, why I started off so aggressive. Uh, John, can you, can, really briefly, just give us your background and, and don't be humble. Cool. So, I guess I started my career at EA, working for Electronic Arts, EA Sports. Whoa, you skipped over college. D1 athlete, national team, lacrosse champion, national lacrosse champion. That was a long time ago. Yeah, you used to be an athlete. Well, I, I said don't be humble, speak about it. Look, uh, I dropped out of community college. John went to Princeton and then Wharton Business School. Uh, okay, all right. So, Do the whole thing. You know, played lacrosse in college, economics major, you know, eventually moved to California. Nice. Worked for EA. Uh, after that, went back to business school, went to Wharton. Um, while I was there, decided I'd start making games myself. So became an indie game developer. Okay. So started doing like design, built my first company, uh, making games, made a game called Dunk Dreams. Dunk love basketball, you know. I love that. Yeah. Why did you first describe it to me? It was, uh, it was, it was like white man can't jump meets like an RPG. It's yeah. It was basically white man can't jump the video game. So, but it was like as much about like your shoes and your headband and your swag as it was. Oh, so you, you know? worked at EA and then you made your own indie games company and it was just microtransactions. A hundred percent. It was like straight. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I can't believe how openly you admitted that. That's awesome. One hundred percent. Yeah, and then after that, I went to work for Nexon, the guys who make Maple Story, and I was running their mobile games group for three years. This is why I really want to bring John and camera, uh, just because we've been hard at work at One Hundred Thieves for about nine months. Um, John joined us at the end of December, and at that time, the team was relatively small. We had John Robinson, uh, we had Jackson Dahl, and then Gabriel Ruiz, who's behind the camera. And from a team of four, we have grown to now, I think, 12 people uh, on the management staff and yep. the back end of the business. That's not including players, managers, and coaches. Another 35 there. Another 35 there. So the company has grown tremendously quick. Well, tremendously quick? No, that, that doesn't make sense. What's up, vocab? Quickly. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I actually wanted this video to be. Now look, I know there might be a lot of different people that watch this video that don't normally watch my videos, but I wanted this to be a very laid back, just conversation about what's been actually happening over the last nine months because, you know, there for me, I've been on somewhat of a hiatus from YouTube um, in, in, in good ways and bad ways. I think for me, it's been an incredible experience over the last nine months in building 100 Thieves and working with John specifically because I do consider us partners and John has a ton of experience in the different parts of business that I haven't spent a ton, ton of time doing in my career. And I cover probably the other half that I would say of the creative and the brand direction and obviously being on camera a lot more often than you. Well, this was super, super eye opening for me. Like when I joined in December, I had no idea. I was like, is Matt going to come to the office every day? Like, is he going to want to work all the time? And Tell then, him. like, little did I know, you know? Tell him. Five days a week in the office, seven days a week working on 100 Thieves. Yeah. I, I, I definitely think you're deeper in the weeds of, you know, spreadsheets and. Google Docs and all these other things. Is that you imitating me? Yeah. Is that you no, yeah. The John, John's always, John goes in his own room. You know, we have an office of five people is our room. And then we have the production team, which is like eight in the other room. And John always finds his own little island, goes and works and takes phone calls. Hey, but that's what, you know, that's why we love you. That's what you're good at, you know? Yeah. And I would definitely say my life is much, much different than it was a year ago. And that's something that I've openly talked about. 
Um, but that's why I really wanted to finally show the world and, and really just have a conversation with you uh, so that you guys can better understand the dynamics of 100 Thieves and how the company operates and the things that are really exciting for me moving forward in the future because we obviously had a really big announcement this past week. We had Scooter Braun uh, and Drake, they led our Series A and honestly, I don't think a lot of people that watch this video or my channel have a good understanding of what that means. Um, so if you could, the business mind in the room, give us a brief description. So like I said, Scooter Braun, Drake, they co-led our Series A, uh, which is a round of investment. Take it away. Yeah. Sure. So last year when 100 Things was kicking off, Dan Gilbert gave us our first round of funding and that allowed us to do things like buy the franchise in League of Legends and pay our players and build up our staff from you to now where we are today with 12 people and 35 players. And as we want to grow further and keep doing all the things that we've been doing pretty well, so more esports, hopefully win some championships sometime soon, hire great players, better apparel, more content, all of that. Uh, we wanted to raise more money and bring more smart people into 100 Thieves to help us do that. I've learned so much about venture capital and uh, that's something that has been incredibly valuable for me because I'm sure that you guys know this, but I definitely have gone through my, my ups and downs with YouTube in, in terms of productivity. Uh, for me, I've always been in pursuit of something that really challenges me, but I feel like as I've diversified the time that I've spent over the last nine months and we've built this business, I definitely have uh, a, a rejuvenation, so to speak, and, and really starting to share this story and share what we've been building. You know, for me, it's been a little tougher as well just because all the really cool shit that we've been working on, it's not anything that I can talk about publicly. You know, this Drake and Scooter announcement that we just uh, dropped on social media, and obviously in this video, you weren't aware, this is something that we've been working on for about six months. And every time that we come up with a brand new apparel collection, we don't want to release the, the concepts or the marketing behind it until about two weeks before it goes on sale. So, and we, when we're about to sign a Call of Duty team, you know, we're spending months trying to field the roster. And so all the really awesome and incredible things that are just fantastic about building 100 Thieves and building the esports organization, these are all things that I have to wait until we can actually share it with the world before I talk about it publicly. It, it's, we've, uh, had a, we've had a lot of quiet celebrations this year. We went to- I know, man. We went to Benihana after we went Drake. Yeah. We <laughs> went to that steakhouse after we actually closed our Series A. But they were all like private celebrations. So this is like the first time now where we can share with everybody that we've done a lot of shit this year. John has deep experience and knowledge in the world of venture capital. Um, and for, for, for me specifically, that is a world that I just haven't spent really any time in. And so for us to have somebody like John sitting next to me every single day, making sure that we do have money in the bank, which traditionally speaking, like you told me, is the CEO's job, but you and I sort of split our, uh, our responsibilities down the middle. I think, hey, we got a good thing going, you know what I'm saying? I we can't, can't, so far. Yeah, I can't complain. So yeah, just explain why you think Drake and Scooter are so valuable to 100 Thieves and the other venture capital funds that we brought on underneath this Series A. So in the first round of financing from Dan, we basically, they gave us a really, really strong background in sports. So we got to work with Dan and his team and we got to know the Cavs and that was fantastic. Mm -hmm. But as everyone has seen this year, it's like we want to win championships and esports is our primary focus, but we're doing a whole lot more than that. So as we think about making great content and making amazing apparel, we wanted to think about who are the other investors who know that world really, really well, who can help us level up really fast. And at the top of your list and the top of my list were Drake. And then when we met Scooter and learned kind of his background and what he offers and you know how many connections he can help us make and how he can help on content and apparel, it was just, like I said, it was kind of a dream team right away. I think you hit the nail on the head. Drake and Scooter bring so much to the table, especially for 100 Thieves, just because we, we, we do focus on winning championships and we invest uh, a significant amount of money in our players and teams and we're gonna continue to do that and, and do everything in our power to, to bring championships home to this organization. But our aspirations are definitely, go be, they definitely go beyond just esports. You know, we have this apparel line that we're really passionate about. And then the entire content arm that we're building out of this company, I think is one of our biggest priorities as well. And so to bring on somebody like Scooter Braun who has managed and created some of the biggest careers in pop culture today. And then having somebody like Drake, who is just the artist. I consider Drake to be one of the greatest artists of our generation. And I've been a huge fan of his and admirer of his career. And 
the way that he's been able to elevate himself through everything that he's done. And so for me, just bringing both those people aboard to really help 100 Thieves transcend everything that we're doing right now is, is honestly, like I said, a dream come true. So I think we put together a great group and the other investors I think are really important in their own ways, but I think it's more relevant to talk about Drake and Scooter for this video specifically. I, 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 I've been wanting to make this type of video for so long and I couldn't think of a better time than this announcement that we had with Drake and Scooter. I, I really feel like we took a step up in our future and really position ourselves to find more success. But before when I would make videos like this and apologizing for not uploading content, it was because I was in a, a bad headspace and I was sitting at home on my couch all day and I was locked in my apartment and I just couldn't get out of that rut. Where over the last year, it's been the complete opposite. I'm out at the office every single day. I'm working with like-minded individuals who drive my motivation to continue to build 100 Thieves and continue to work in this industry. I'm just excited. And yeah, I was gonna say, that's the part that I'm most excited about. Do you wanna talk about like where we're going in the future and what we're gonna do <coughs> with I was up money? to, man. Run it down for me, Sweet. baby. Um, so I think all the things that we that have been going well for us, you know, like eSports, we're gonna continue to spend a lot of money there. You know, we had a uh, top two team in League of Legends this year, managed the World Championships. Next year, we're gonna be just as committed to having a championship team. Um, Call of Duty, built a great team with our, in our first year, spent a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I mean, the part that got me excited was when we announced Kenny and Pharaoh. The community just like blew up, and, and so that was just the, the beginning. Yeah, we just knew like the expectation was like you got to deliver, you got to deliver wins, you know, like you got to deliver championships. So at that point, I think my I think the budget changed a little bit as well. Well, it was the budget was going to be whatever budget we needed, John. You were going to ring up a check. Well, I was going to talk to Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Jason's our VP of Finance <laughs> and uh, Operations, and my man is a penny pincher, but. And when I really want to push on something, we push on it. One of the best assets for 100 Thieves. Yeah, he, no, man, no. he saves money. I do the exact opposite. I spend no, no. as fast as I get it, you know what I'm saying? Because I know I'm going to make it back. That's got to be like a rap line or something. I know people say that all the time. But I don't actually think like that. I, I, I save my money. I know. Except for cars. Cars I kind of fuck up on. True. 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 Big facts. Good segue. So the second thing, if number one is esports, number two is probably going to be content. Mm -hmm. So our team this year has done pretty unbelievable job with four guys behind the scenes making you know a dozen videos a month started with one yep gabriel yep the uh the creator of the heist mm -hmm. gabriel did a phenomenal job then we brought on logan dotson from phase clan we stole him away from that team and then we continued to hire out from there but our core group from the very beginning has just done a tremendous job of really shaping the story and the feel and the tone of 100 thieves and sometimes you ask logan to do stuff for you don't you logan edits some of my vlogs yes he he is uh do you give him a lot of time to like turn those around or is it like pretty, pretty tight deadlines? No, hell no. Because back in the day when I was uploading every day, John, yeah. I was filming these videos, then editing them, mm -hmm. then filming another one the next day. Yeah. So they don't really have any excuses. If I give you a vlog at five o'clock, let's go, let's get, it, let's get it finished. But Logan's a lot better at editing than me, so I would imagine it takes a little bit more time. So that would be number two. We're definitely gonna grow our content team so that you can make more videos, yep. so that we can cover all of our teams and all of our content creators. Yep, 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 yep. So that'll be a lot more coming there. Absolutely. And then cool. the the last but not least, I would say is the world of 100 Thieves Apparel. Mm -hmm. We have made strides over the last year to deliver the, the highest quality of clothing across the entire gaming industry. And I don't even want us to pigeonhole ourselves and, and say the gaming industry. I, I really believe that the, the material and the fit and the, the meticulousness that we've had with our, with our apparel and each piece of clothing that we've sold is considered to be the highest of quality in, in most places that you would shop for clothing. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like we're in a tremendous place now where we're really hitting our stride. We have another drop coming in December yep. and then we're blowing the hinges off in 2019. We've really been evaluating internally what our apparel strategy looks like. I think we've done a phenomenal job of delivering the right quality, but the availability and the accessibility, I think, has been lacking in a lot of different ways, and that's something that we continue to talk about uh, every single day in really trying to make sure that, although we want this to be an exclusive experience, we want it to be all-encompassing. If, if you support 100 Thieves, we want you to be able to represent our team. Yeah, I think next year we're gonna do more drops at a wider variety of price points, so fans can buy stuff. If they wanna support the team, we'll hopefully be giving them stuff more often. Uh, maybe there, no, there's, no, it's not. Yeah, let's not talk about this because there's a lot of things that I want to do, but I don't yeah. want to. I don't want to talk about it. And then people are like, "Where's it?" And then, By the way, like remember what we talked about this morning about leaks, <sighs> dude. You, listen, already, you just talked about December. 
the December drop is happening. And John, I'll tell you what, isn't if I want to leak something, it's getting leaked. And remember, I'll do what I want. Okay. Except if you're trying to buy something with your company credit card. Yeah, dude, I cannot believe that. Long story short, John and I, we went to a McDonald's drive through at 4 a.m. in the morning after a long day of work, and I was buying us McDonald's on the company card, and it bounced. We can actually say what it, where it was, right? Yeah, we were uh, coming back from the Drake concert. We had these custom gaming 100 Thieves rigs created, and uh, we had to call a 24-7 moving company to come and pick them up from the forum where Drake performed like six different shows in LA, and this guy showed up with a Suburban and a trailer. He had a dog, a cat, and three guys with them, and they lugged them out. They didn't have blankets or anything. They just saran wrapped them, threw it on top of the Suburban, and we had to go store them in the head of eSports uh, garage. It was this really long, really long, 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 long day. But that's where we got the photo with Drake, which was really cool. And they look dope, and they'll end up in our facility. And they're sick. Yeah, they're gonna end up in our facility, Leak. Yep. And uh, for us, it was just a really interesting experience for it all to end up with us in the McDonald's drive through with our Uber driver and my card getting declined and I had to use my personal card. And I'm, I know- Thanks for, for doing that though. Yeah, I did that, but there's no way I'm filling out that expense report. So I just took a probably about a $15 L on that one. I gotta do expense reports now. Right. Ah, They're like, it's like 95% automatic. Still. Do so you think Jason's gonna watch this? 5% effort. I hope he does. I hope so too. This is, it's been like a podcast. I, mm -hmm. I've enjoyed this. Cool. So listen, I don't want to take up too much of your guys' time. Uh, we've, we've chatted about quite a bit and hopefully the production team can edit it to make it all sound cohesive and make me sound really, really smart. Cause I feel like with me today, I have, why do I keep looking at that camera? I haven't slept at all. I literally did not sleep last night. I've been, wa we've been waiting to make this Drake and Scooter Braun announcement since March or June or April, one of the months. It was a long time ago. And I've been holding on to the secret and I've just been sticking it deeper, deeper down in my, my, my core and myself and my mind and I haven't been able to talk about it and I've been losing sleep. And then last night we finally get to make the announcement in the following morning, 6 a.m. Pacific and I couldn't get my eyes to shut, couldn't stay off Twitter and it was the worst night of my life. And I haven't been able to sleep so I can't stop talking and a holy God, I think I'm about to have a panic attack. We got to turn these things off. Listen, guys, this was a breakdown of 100 Thieves, what I've been doing for the last nine months. I hope this sheds some more light on where I've been, what I've been building, uh, my partner John and, and what he contributes, and hopefully this will give him more excitement about being on camera. Please be nice to him. I know he looks like a dweeb, and he's, he's very boring, and he, he's, his vocabulary is very expansive, says a lot of big words that we maybe don't all understand. He said the word incredulous the other day, and I swear to God, I didn't believe it was an actual word. Turns out it was. Really smart guy. Community College, Princeton. McDonald's, EA. I don't know. Things aren't adding up. I really gotta stop talking. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. More updates to come. We're gonna bring it all out there. Oh, Jesus Christ. YouTube, we'll see you fudging later. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>